This evening, you'll hear from the full spectrum of elected officials who govern our Washington County. You'll learn more about each of us, what we do, and what we envision for the future of this wonderful place we call home, Washington County, Oregon. Later in the program, I'll have a chance to share with you a little bit about my vision for the county. Right now, I want to set the stage by telling you a little bit about Washington County, the organization. Washington County has a public service mission to provide excellent and cost-effective services that support healthy, peaceful, safe, and sustainable communities and to encourage meaningful participation in community activities and county governance. Like all of the 36 counties in Oregon, Washington County provides countywide services, standard countywide services. This speaks to the first part of our mission, providing cost-effective services. This includes zoning for rural farm and forest lands, affordable housing, health and human services, including veteran services, public safety, including the jail, community corrections, and the courts. We focus countywide resources, your tax dollars, on those countywide services, from elections to public health to the county jail. But here in Washington County, we also have three unique responsibilities. First, we take care of major roadways that span our communities, such as Murray Boulevard, Northwest 187th Avenue, and Tualatin Sherwood Road. Secondly, we're responsible for clean water services, which is our countywide stormwater and sewer agency, where wastewater gets treated and clean water is restored to our Tualatin River. Lastly, 37% of our population lives in urban unincorporated areas. These are neighborhoods outside of cities. In these areas, we provide zoning for homes and buildings. Residents in these unincorporated areas pay an additional tax for some basic services which the county provides, specifically the Urban Road Maintenance District and the Enhanced Sheriff Patrol District. The second part of our mission is to encourage meaningful participation in community activities and county government. As our population has more than doubled over the last 40 years, the cultural, racial, and ethnic richness of our community has also expanded. The U.S. Census Bureau tells us that among all Oregon counties, Washington County is the least white, has the highest percentage of Asian Americans and Asians, has the largest Latinx community, and has the lowest median age of our metro regional counties at under 37 years. This multiculturalism is evidenced by the dozens of languages that are spoken throughout our county. Our diversity is a strength and a cause for celebration. We must continue to evolve our service delivery for everyone who makes up our community. We have a critical responsibility to build more inclusive and equitable access and outcomes for those who've been historically underserved and underrepresented. I'll be talking more about this aspect of our work after the rest of our board has had a chance to contribute to the presentation tonight. With that backdrop, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dick Scouten, who's demonstrated his commitment to our community with 19 years of service on your board of commissioners. Commissioner Scouten. Thank you, Chair Harrington. Um, it's really been my privilege and my, uh, and my honor to have been the Washington County Commissioner representing the Aloha, Beaverton, and Cooper Mountain area. Um, 
I've been here now about 30 years, and Washington County very much is my home, and, and it's a great place. Uh, but I did grow up in, in California, and I, I went to uh, Santa Clara undergrad and got a political science degree, uh, and then went out to law school at UCLA. And uh, then I floundered for a couple of years trying to figure out what area of law practice I would, I would really be comfortable in. And uh, at a couple of years out, I got a job as an assistant city attorney in Redwood City in the Bay Area. And I, I came to realize that was really my calling. I, I, I really love local government. And I had a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, pleasure and fun um, uh, and, and felt very gratified uh, representing special districts, cities, and counties. Uh, so I enjoyed that for a number of years. And then uh, from there, I moved on to elected office, uh, again, at the local level. And it's really, again, it's been an honor and it's been a pleasure. My part of the program is to provide an update on housing in Washington County. And yes, uh, housing is definitely a major concern in our county. And the bottom line is, is that we are making some progress when it comes to affordable housing in our community, but much more work needs to be done. One measure of our need for affordable housing is whether a family must pay more than 30% of their household income for housing costs. And by this measure, the affordable housing problem really worsened dramatically four or five years ago as the economy here was recovering from the recession and home values skyrocketed in Washington County as well as the rest of the West Coast and elsewhere. Uh, in 2014, about that time period, about 75,000 Washington County residents fell into this cost burden category paying more than 30% of their, of their income to, towards housing. Uh, so that's about 37% of all the housing units in the county. By our latest data, that number has fallen to about 70,000 cost burden households, or about 32% of all the housing units. Uh, so there's been a little bit of progress. We think a job-rich economy and a slightly cooling housing market has helped that. Uh, so there is some good news there. But 70,000 uh, households, that's a huge number. That's the population of Sherwood and Tigard combined. Research tells us that Washington County needs at least 14,000 uh, more housing units, affordable housing units, to address the gap that we have. Since 2016, the county has increased its investment in general fund dollars, but I believe we need to do quite a bit more in that area. The passage of Metro's affordable housing bond measure last November has given our cause a, a real boost. We anticipate funding for an additional 1,300 affordable units in our county once these regional dollars are put to work in our county. Regarding homelessness, uh, data shows us making progress, some progress, but overall homelessness has moved slowly uh, downward since 2013. But chronic homelessness continues to be a concern and in fact has increased in the last couple of uh, four years. Our approach as far as chronic homelessness is concerned must consider the, a range of barriers that are preventing people from transitioning out of homelessness. These barriers include poor credit, eviction history, criminal background, lack of education and job skills, and domestic violence and other socioeconomic factors that are holding them back. So together, working with cities and nonprofits and Metro, we are moving forward with strategies to address that problem. We're looking at housing first, and wrapping around services of permanent supportive services to address the conditions that these people have. I'm confident, based on great work that I've been hearing about very recently in San Francisco and Los Angeles, which are very, very challenging places as far as housing is concerned, I'm confident, based on the good work that's going on there, that we can also make significant uh, new progress in the next couple of years. And I look forward to working with my colleagues to do that. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, one of the newest members of the Washington County Board of Commissioners, but she is no newcomer to Washington County. Please welcome Commissioner Pam Trees. Thank you, Commissioner Scouten, and thank you especially for the kiss. I appreciated that. And thank you to each of you for attending this evening. I appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you this evening. I want to give a special thank you to Chair Harrington for including all of us in this State of the County. So thank you for that. I am proud. 
I am proud to represent District 2. The district is largely made up of unincorporated Washington County, with a portion of Beaverton and a portion of Hillsborough. I decided to run for this office after the 2016 election. I wanted to bring my expertise to the table to work on the issues that we, as a community, face in Washington County. I have two granddaughters, Olivia and Addison, that live right here in Washington County and in my district. I want to serve as an agent of positive change for our community and as a role model for them. My personal four areas of focus are diversity, equity, and inclusion in all that the county does, housing options for everyone, especially affordable housing, effective transportation congestion solutions across the region, and a robust public health program with an environmental focus. Tonight, I want to highlight two things that we all have in common. Both are key principles for your Board of Commissioners, our environment, and our public health. The Cedar Mill North Johnson Watershed Collaborative Project, I see Virginia Bruce nodding her head, <laughs> the collaborative project is an example of this continuing commitment to public health and to our environment. In June of 2017, as a result of flooding and drainage concerns from residents and businesses in the Cedar Mill North Johnson watershed, Governor Brown designated the Cedar Mill Flood Remediation Collaborative as an Oregon Solutions Project. That was a really big deal. That designation started a 16-month process with 20 partners that represented city and county governments, local, state, and federal regulatory agencies, transportation agencies, business entities, environmental organizations, and the community. It also included a very robust outreach effort to the public. The Oregon Solutions effort culminated in October of last year with a declaration of cooperation that was signed by all the partners. One of the key outcomes was the establishment of the Tualatin Watershed Enhancement Collaborative. That was made up of agencies from across our county. As community members, what we can expect to see is a three-year work plan, and that's coming from this collaborative that will help us guide guide us in policy making, create projects to address the resiliency of the against flooding, and address environmental improvement and support financial security within the watershed context. We all look forward to hearing about the progress of this three-year plan. My next project that I want to talk to you about is something that we all have been hearing about, but it's very important. This month is Suicide Prevention Month, and the tagline that we've seen in the media and everywhere is breaking the silence. I want to take a moment and tell you how Washington County and our public health department has been a leader locally and nationwide in the effort to, again, break the silence. Our lead epidemiologist, Dr. Kimberly Rep, took note that there was a clear relationship between people who surrendered their healthy, well-loved pets at the Bonnie Hayes Animal Shelter and subsequently died by suicide. The Public Health Division of our Health and Human Services Department went to work to establish a training for the animal shelter workers that included breaking the silence again by asking the person surrendering their animal if they were considering harming themselves and then offering a connection to a mental health provider. I'm extremely proud to tell you that this intervention step has reduced suicides and has been identified as a nation, as a model nationwide. Congratulations to Dr. Rep and the team. I want to thank you for your time, and now it is my great pleasure to turn over the program to the longest serving county commissioner ever in the state of Oregon, my friend, Commissioner Roy Rogers. Wow, what a great crowd. Thank you all for coming out and listening to all of us a little bit about a very complex organization we call Washington County. And I'm uh, not going to look at you, Julie, because you have time, so I'll just kind of do my, my thing here. But um, 
how did I get involved? I think we're all, you're hearing that from all of us, how we got involved. And I had three mayors who strongly urged me to run. Uh, there was very, very poor relationships with the county from the cities. Uh, I was, as I mentioned, the, the uh, mayor of the city of Tualatin at that point, and mayor of the city of Tualatin at that point, and the three mayors said, we've got to enhance our image uh, with, the, uh, with the county. So anyway, they encouraged me to run. They said, we well, have been very active in your community, which I had. I've been past president of the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce in Tigard and past president of the Rotary Club and past president of JCS. For any of you old enough to know that, uh, I was uh, involved in all of those plus a number of other organizations. And I'm also very active in my uh, state society, my professional state society. I was past president of the Oregon Society of CPA. So they said, we think we might be able to get you elected. And I, I guess they did do that. And so I went over trying to solve those two issues that uh, the chair had pointed out and others had pointed out. Uh, and we did that collectively as a board. We passed the County 2000, which is our strategic plan. We're still doing it today, which was great. In regard to the issues of what was perceived as double taxation, we established the Enhanced Sheriff's Patrol District and the Urban Road Maintenance District. At the same time, we also uh, had the good voters approve what we call MSTIP, which is a transportation package. So we had some funds to finally do something. We used to name the potholes and all that sort of thing, so no, we didn't have to do that anymore. About that time, then Chair Bonnie Hayes said, Roy, I, I know you uh, like a challenge and we've got some unsolvable problems with transportation. Would you take that lead? And so I did do that. And I would like to tell you a little bit about my experiences. One, I found it's a very complicated area. It's all based upon relationships with our partners in the region. And you've got to have patience and persistence. And I measure success in inches nowadays, not so much in greater, greater amounts of, of, of uh, things happening. So what's happened since the 1980s and what have we accomplished? We've uh, added over 220 miles of new roads. That's enough to go to the coast and back. We've uh, added over 145 miles of bike lanes, which I'm very proud of. We've added uh, over 130 miles of new sidewalks. We have a commuter train between Beaverton and Wilsonville called Wes. And we've added 66 miles of regional trails. We've got many, many more on the, on the, uh, uh, on the books. So as I enter this stage of my career, I'm not only looking at what's happening present, but looking out and saying, okay, what would I like to see done? And part of it's being done, I'd commend uh, Commissioner Treese. Uh, Pam, you're involved with a regional effort on transportation, and that's great. But I want to give you quickly my list of my wish list, and maybe we can accomplish some of these things. One, in the transit area, I want to see a light rail project between Portland and Bridgeport. I want it done. I want to see that we go from there to downtown to Walton. I think it needs to be done. I think we need extensions of light rail to Forest Grove and to Sherwood. We need west to Salem. Let's get it all the way down there. In the active transportation area, we need a host of projects, more trails, more sidewalks, particularly around transit areas and particularly around schools. So let's, let's do some infill. In the road area, TV highway, we need a comprehensive fix. Dix, you've been saying that for a long time. We do. Beaverton, Hillsdale, uh, Highway, Olson, Schultz Ferry Road, need to fix that terrible intersection, and we will. Farmington Road, 170th to 209th, we need to complete that street project. 185th light rail uh, overcrossing. Steve, we need to get that done. 185th, Kinnaman to Farmington Road, uh, we need to get that done. Finally, maybe we'll get six lanes on 217. We've been talking about that since the 90s in the loop track, so maybe we can get it done. Walker, we need street improvements from Canyon Road to Murray. Also, uh, Walker realignment and complete streets from 185th to Cornelius Pass Road. On Cornell, we need to act, add bike lanes from baseline to uh, road to uh, 25th Avenue, and also we need to complete street improvements from Highway 26 to the Multnomah County line. To, if I stop, Julie, these projects aren't going to get done. I, yeah, 209th, if, if you want project cut, 209th Avenue uh, from Kinnaman to Farmington, we need to complete, and two, what I think are essential projects, we need a northern connector out of, uh, out of Hillsboro so that we connect to the port and to PDX without congesting 217 and, and uh, 26 anymore. And our urban renew uh, reserves, we're adding urban, reserve, urban uh, reserves. We need a new Clark Hill to Cornelius Pass road connection, tile flat road connection, an extension, improvements to Beef Bend, to Roy Rogers, to tile flat road, to Gra Grabhorn Road, Clark Hill Road, and safety improvements on 219. So we got a full plate, and I think we can do it if we put some muscle behind it. 
It's my great uh, pleasure to introduce Jerry Willie. Jerry and I have worked on numerous projects when he was mayor of the, of the city of Hillsborough. I count him a friend and somebody it has been a pleasure to work with. Jerry. Well, thank you, and thank you for being here, Roy. Uh, we recognize Roy as our senior commissioner because you probably don't know this, but his predecessor was Moses. That's how long he's been on the commission, so we have to respect his position and his tenure. And Roy, I just need to let you know before I forget, uh, also my daughter's sitting here in the front. She lives in Sherwood and uh, has to drive Roy Rogers Road every freaking day. And so I think she wants to talk to you about that uh, when we're done. So I'm just, I'm just letting you know. And you, we all know that the world of politics has significantly taken a change in some different direction in the last few years. But I have to tell you that um, today I was on Facebook and it, it took a really turn for a twisted worst. I saw the, the mayor of Forest Grove, Pete Truex, I wish he was here so he could just witness this, who is a rabid, avid husky. He actually was in a picture with his arm around the Oregon duck mascot. And uh, we're gonna hold that out for him. I, I think the comments that he had put alongside that picture and that posting were deleted out. So, uh, but next time you see him, ask Pete about how his relationship with the Oregon duck went. Um, I am the commissioner for District 4 of the Washington County, which is, just to describe it very quickly, I am west of Cornelius Pass to the county border to the north, Columbia, to the south, Yamhill. I am all the way to Timber. I touch four different counties. I touch six different cities. That is Cornelius, Forest Grove, Gaston, Banks, North Plains and a portion of Hillsboro. And District 4 is the largest geographical district in the county. So with that, it's a different perspective of county responsibilities and priorities because we get to deal with not only the urban, the urban growth in around city of Hillsboro, but we need to go west into our rural communities. So who am I? I've been married to my wife, Judy, for 51 years. She's sitting down here in front. And considering that I tell people I'm only 59 years old, I guess uh, you can tell that's probably a stretch. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I am 33 years as a CPA, now retired, former mayor of Hillsboro for eight years. And I have two children and I have four grandchildren. So why? am I in politics? I actually prefer to be called elected, but whatever. I ran for this office and the mayor of Hillsborough because I think we, all of us in an elected position, and there are many electeds in the audience tonight, we are called to serve. We, th we are to be visionaries for what could be in our jurisdictions, to work with our constituents and to work with other electeds to find answers for the future of our respective areas and to find answers in areas that we don't agree on. It's our responsibility to work together and to keep the trains running on time. We live in a blessed county, a self-proclaimed as the economic engine of Oregon. And in District 4, we have many gyms, two of which are Hag Lake, and the Washington County Fairgrounds. Hag Lake, Scoggins Dam, is a federal facility. It's Washington County's primary water source, and it's a major regional asset. The 52,000 acre foot reservoir irrigates 17,000 acres of prime agriculture farmland. It provides drinking water for 400,000 residents. It supports 283,000 jobs and more than 18,000 businesses, including Intel, Nike, and Genentech. It restores flow to the Tualatin River to improve water quality and provide critical habitat for fish and wildlife. 
It's a major recreational destination with more than 900,000 visitor days every year. Now, the water that stays in the lake is thanks to Scoggins Dam. Unfortunately, this dam needs a little help because in the preparation for the big one, the big earthquake that we all are being reminded of, planning for that dam replacement started several years ago and we finally narrowed the options down to three. This is a huge project, requires collaboration from our federal partners as well as many regional partners and clean water services. But you're gonna need to stay tuned to see what the important project is as the preferred alternative to the options for dam replacement or dam enhancement, which is scheduled for later this year. This is a project that needs to be completed by 2027. Another gem is the Washington County Fairgrounds, home of the Washington County Fair. This fair, which is touted as one of the best in the state, we think it is the best in the state, is expanding to 10 days starting in 2020. This is a much needed change, which will enhance a broader range of activities for both urban and rural patrons. This 100-acre parcel in the middle of Hillsboro is now also the home of the Washington County Event Center. The new center under construction with an expected completion date of spring 2020. The 75,000 square foot facility will provide a venue for many conferences and events alongside the Hillsboro Airport and sometime in the future, a new hotel next door. The Fairgrounds Advisory Committee is presently working on a strategic plan for the future needs of the county from this 100-acre facility. Visionary planning for the county entails both urban and rural priorities. Our cities outside the urban growth boundary are growing rapidly, requiring assistance in residential planning, as well as providing public transportation to getting the new residents of our urban areas to employment centers. The county is financially healthy, and as a commission, we are focused on providing opportunity for a diverse population. If you are interested in seeing how you can become a part of this vibrant county, please contact our website for opportunities. Employment, boards, and committees are available. Now, please welcome back to the podium this Washington County Chair, Catherine Harrington. Thank you, Commissioner Willie. I really appreciate hearing the words of all of my fellow board members. We are a new commission, and we are just getting to know more about one another. I'd like to start by taking a moment to acknowledge this evening's event. Back in January, not long after I was sworn in, our county team very quickly started talking to me about the state of the county. During one meeting, our amazing communications team, with our communications team, we decided that this was a good new year to try something new. A key initiative for me, for Washington County, as your chair, is transparency and public engagement. To me, <laughs> to me good government means accessible government. And what better format to increase accessibility than to bring my colleagues together on one stage to meet the people we work for. And so thank you to my colleagues. I know how busy your calendars are and taking the time to come out to engage with our community is much appreciated. And maybe more importantly, thank you to all of you for being in the audience tonight. As elected officials, it is our role to serve you to the best of our ability. But we can't do that if we don't see you or hear from you. Now a little bit more about me and my vision in working for you. Nearly 30 years ago, high-tech jobs brought me and my husband to Washington County. This is my chosen home. There are few places where physical beauty meets business successes, where cutting edge 
technology companies bump elbows with historic family farms and nurseries. Washington County is one of those places. But over the past several decades, Washington County has evolved from a mainly rural community to one grappling with urban issues. We deal with traffic congestion, rising home and rental prices, and strains on our public services. And while we all know the statistics about Washington County's above average median family incomes and below average unemployment, there are those in our community who are struggling to put food on the table or who have been priced out of their homes. The need in Washington County is real. At the same time that we've seen population of Washington County change, we've seen the changing face of our community. And with that must come a renewed commitment to supporting community-based, culturally specific services. We need to serve diverse populations and partner with them so that no one is left behind. Washington County has a bright future ahead of us. As your chair, I want to work on countywide transportation solutions so people have safer and better options to get around the county, giving you more time to spend with your family. I want to ensure people have access to stable, healthy housing. And I want to grow the availability of family wage jobs, especially through our small local businesses. As a community, we need to embrace our diversity while acknowledging there is still more to be done. As your chair, I'm focused on shaping our opportunities to benefit all, navigate our challenges so that no one is left behind, and to preserve what is so special about Washington County today. We have opportunities and challenges ahead of us, but I have no doubt that together we will move Washington County forward. And speaking of moving forward, I'd now like to give the floor to some of our fellow elected officials serving throughout our county, beginning with County Auditor John Hutzler. Thank you all for coming tonight and for your interest in Washington County government and its elected officials. My name is John Hutzler. I've served as your Washington County Auditor for the past eight years and began my third term in January. I want to thank Chair Harrington for the, creating this new format for the state of the county, one that provides all of your elected officials the opportunity to tell our constituents who we are, why we've chosen public service as a career, what we do, and how we intend to make Washington County a better place for us all to live, to work, to play, and to raise a family. As your county auditor, I especially appreciate this opportunity. I expect most of you have a pretty good idea of what it is that your sheriff, your district attorney, and your judges do. After all, police shows and courtroom dramas have filled our TV hours for many years. But how many of you know what the county auditor does? I see my family's hands and some of the speed readers in the audience who picked up a brochure from the back table. <laughs> when I tell people that I'm the county auditor, they usually assume my job is to audit their taxes or to audit the county's financial statements. I don't do either of those things. I can barely do my own taxes. <laughs> and state law requires that the county's financials be reviewed by an external CPA firm. When I tell people that I'm the county auditor, they usually assume I'm a CPA. At various stages in my career, I've been a teacher, a lawyer, a researcher, and a consultant. For the past 23 years, I've been an auditor for state and local government and nonprofits here in Oregon. I have great respect for CPAs, but I have no desire to be one. 
I'm proud to be a certified internal auditor, or CIA. Although I admit, I don't highlight that credential when I travel internationally. <laughs> the Office of County Auditor is charged in the county charter to continuously evaluate the effectiveness and results achieved by county programs and the costs and resources used to achieve those results. My office evaluates whether your county government is efficiently and effectively providing its citizens with the services you want and need. We recommend improvements to county programs and operations and hold county officials accountable for implementing those improvements. We're a small operation, just three of the county's roughly 2,000 employees. Obviously, we can't audit everything the county does, but we do have the authority to audit anything the county does. Over the years, my office has recommended improvements in road maintenance, fleet management, sheriff's patrol, the justice court, animal services, jail health care, annexation, sustainability, executive expenses, and government ethics. Just yesterday, we presented to the board our recommendations for how the county could better protect your credit card information and more effectively and efficiently return surplus property to the tax rolls. Over the next few months, we will report on the quality of care at the animal shelter, emergency ambulance services, cash handling, licensing of animal rescue agencies in the county, and the county's ethics hotline. Going forward, I anticipate a major focus of my office over the next several years will be evaluating the county's implementation of the Metro Affordable Housing Bond. We provide the board and the public with objective and systematic assessments of the performance and management of county programs. We are your eyes and ears in county government, making sure that the county uses your tax dollars in your best interest to make Washington County an even better place for us all to live. As I said, we can audit anything the county does. I invite you to suggest areas of county operations that you feel would benefit from an examination by the auditor's office. Just go to the auditor's office website and share your ideas for an audit. I look forward to receiving your suggestions and to serving as your county auditor for the next four years. I also look forward to serving with our county sheriff, Pat Garrett, who's our next speaker. Pat. It is my honor to serve as your sheriff and my privilege to work alongside our sheriff's office professionals who number about 600 and provide countywide services to just over 600,000 residents. I have been part of the sheriff's office team for 30 years. I'm a husband, father, and son I'm a former soldier with 25 years of service to the Army and Army Reserve. <laughs> While in college, I spent a term studying in Ecuador. Studying abroad and my experiences living and working in other countries while in the military opened my eyes to the richness of multicultural communities, and it reinforced my interest and lifelong commitment to learn more about and be supportive of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Like me, the men and women of the Sheriff's Office are part of our community. They raise and support their families, and they live in our community. Each has their own education, background, and experience, which together make us a dynamic, strong team. I also want you to know 
that they work very hard for you. And sometimes their work, it's very challenging, it can be stressful, and at times it can be dangerous. As an example, earlier today, a deputy while driving his patrol car was hit by an oncoming vehicle who crossed into his lane. When we're done with our remarks today, I'll check on him and his family at an area hospital. The prognosis for full recovery is good, but his condition required that he'd be transported and he's receiving care. The demands of their work can sometimes also keep them beyond their, the, the end of their scheduled shift. And in those times when I see them, while I see fatigue in their eyes, I also see a smile on their face. They are absolutely committed to doing the very best that they can for our community, to work in a way that makes a difference in our community, to keep you safe and themselves safe. I feel lucky to be on the same team with them, and I thank you for your support to them as well. We proudly patrol the county's 726 square miles. We work day and night to run a 572 bed jail. We investigate major crimes through our detective unit, and our services division supports the operations of our entire office. Our commitment to public safety is supported by strong organizational values, purposely simple and clear. Do your best, do the right thing, and treat others the way you want to be treated. These straightforward yet powerful guiding principles are designed to remind all of us the importance of treating people well and building a professional culture. While public safety is a priority and crime rates matter, service, kindness, and respect for all people must be our cornerstone. As we move into the second half of 2019, I'm excited to announce Washington County's first public safety training center is on the cusp of completion. The facility sits on 12 acres in West Hillsboro and will be sure to enhance local training for all public safety responders in Washington County. Training first responders, which is frequent, of excellent caliber, at a reliable venue, and is standardized across multiple agencies is a matter of public safety. And I will forever be grateful to our commissioners on my right for making that dream of a top-tier training center a reality. <laughs> Not only will we train in traditional skills like driving, building, clearing, and report writing, we're also gonna do better at training in areas like de-escalation, crisis intervention, and officer wellness. Tailored training which meets the needs of our community and our men and women is one way that we stay the safest major urban county in Oregon. So thanks again for coming out and being with us today. Let me introduce to you Washington County's District Attorney, Kevin Barton. Hello, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Kevin Barton, I'm your District Attorney. And I live here in Washington County with my wife, my three children. I've worked and served as a prosecutor here in the DA's office for the past 13 years. Washington County is my home. It's where I'm raising my family. It's where I grew up. And I'm committed to ensuring that this county remains a safe place for all of you to live, to work, and to raise families here as well. The mission of the DA's office is simple. It's to protect our community and to seek justice. Seeking justice means always doing the right thing for the right reason. And protecting our community means always making every decision with public safety in mind. How does this decision impact keeping our community safe? I often tell people when they ask me, what does the DA do or what's it like to be the DA? I tell people that the DA is like the airbag in your car. 
You don't think about it every day. You know it's important. You know it's there. And when it needs to work, it needs to work well. And it needs to work well to protect you, a loved one, a family, a friend. And I'm here to tell you that your Washington County DA's office does just that. It works well. Last year, in 2018, we reviewed over 11,000 criminal cases for prosecution. We served 11,700 separate crime victims who suffered crimes here in Washington County. We obtained court orders for over $5.8 million in restitution to compensate crime victims for their losses. We collected $32.4 million in owed child support for parents who needed help raising their children and were owed the support from a separated spouse. We led eight different specialty and treatment courts and programs designed to address the root causes of crimes, things that were plaguing our community, addiction, mental health, ways that we can make Washington County safer. We benefited from over 3,100 hours of volunteer time, people in our community who volunteered their services in our office. That's the equivalent of one and a half full-time employees through 2018 alone. And we worked with our partners in law enforcement, partners like the sheriff and the different police chiefs throughout Washington County to prosecute countless violent crimes and crimes that threaten our well-being and our community safety. The work of the DA's office is collaborative, and it's done in active partnership with you, the community. We can't work without witnesses reporting crimes, jurors serving on juries, our community partners collectively helping us investigate cases. I'd like to share with you a brief story. A few years ago, I had finished a child sex abuse trial, a difficult case. The jury had voted guilty and I was done with the matter and I was back in my office. And a few days later, I received a phone call. It was one of the jurors who was reaching out. And the rules are that you're allowed to speak with a juror when the case is over. And so she and I were able to speak. She was asking if I'd be willing to meet with the jury. They wanted to meet with me and talk about the case. And I agreed. I actually met them for dinner. 11 of the 12 jurors sat down with me. And that's when they shared with me their plan. They were so moved by what they had seen and heard in their time as jurors, listening to that difficult child sex abuse trial and that victim testifying, that they wanted to come together and form a scholarship fund for that child victim so she'd have the opportunity to move on with her life and pass that terrible ordeal. <laughs> Moments like that happen in the DA's office, and when that one occurred, it really touched me. And I can tell you that jury's actions, they were significant for more than one reason. First, they recognized what 20 years worth of scientific research and frankly common sense tells us. Children who suffer negative experiences during their childhood, uh, exposure to abuse or neglect or violence are more likely to experience challenges later in life. The very same challenges we're dealing with as a community, things like opioid issues, addiction, mental health, criminal behavior. And second, and perhaps more importantly, that jury demonstrated how Washington County residents respond, how they spring into action when there's a need to protect a vulnerable member of our community. One of my priorities as your district attorney is to do for all of Washington County what that jury did for my crime victim. To that end, I've partnered with an organization called CARES Northwest. CARES is a child abuse clinic whose mission is to stop child abuse and neglect through multidisciplinary prevention, medical evaluation, and ongoing treatment in partnership with our community. And we are working to find a location for CARES Northwest to come to Washington County to serve all of our children and our vulnerable victims. To do that, we need your help and the help of your neighbors and your friends to spread the word and increase the awareness. Like my jury, it requires a collaborative effort 
to accomplish that goal. I believe the work that we do to protect and support the vulnerable in our community will pay off and create a safer Washington County for all of us, and I'm confident that our community will come together to make this a reality for our children and for everyone who lives in our county. Thank you very much. I'd like to now introduce our presiding circuit court judge, Judge Charlie Bailey. Uh, I'm in that stage where I have to put glasses on to read, so I'm gonna apologize. Just that weird, awkward time that we have. Chair Harrington, commissioners, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you uh, to all of you for giving me the opportunity to be here. I think I'm the only one on the stage that's not actually paid by the taxpayer dollars here in Washington County. We're actually paid by the state. Uh, so uh, I appreciate being here and the opportunity to talk about Washington County courts, your courts. I want to give a little background about myself. Um, I've lived in Washington County almost my entire life, other than service and college. Um, I've been here the whole time. My wife, although she's originally from Guernsey, I don't know if you know where Guernsey is, it's a, a Channel Island off the coast of France. If you've ever heard of a Guernsey cow, there you go. That's where they come from. Uh, she's lived most of her life here as well, and although we both went off to college in different places here than Washington County, and we both chose to start and raise our family here uh, in Washington County, and all three of them were born here, and all three of them are, have been raised here uh, so far, and will continue to be. Now, there's a saying out there that if you want to change the world, you should start in your own backyard. I have no desire to change the world, I'll tell you that. But I love my backyard. My backyard is Washington County. Uh, I was, uh, before I became a judge, I was a district attorney uh, here in Washington County, did the same things that uh, your DA uh, did as well. I was a child abuse prosecutor, worked on delinquency cases, dependency cases, and what I really wanted to do always was to provide a safe environment for our county because it meant so much to me. Same thing as a judge uh, in 2006, I became an uh, elected official. Uh, thank you very much for those of you who voted against me. I'm sorry for those that didn't. Um, but I've been a judge since 2006 and became the presiding judge a little over four years ago, and my focus is still the same. I'm trying to create an environment in which your safety is the paramount concern. Sometimes that involves our courthouse to make sure our courthouse is safe for everybody uh, and to feel safe for everybody. Uh, they don't feel like uh, they are some outsider or anything like that, and we've done everything we can to create that environment at your courthouse. I want to talk a little bit about Washington County Courts, because that's really why I'm here, and because I'm speaking on, be, uh, on, on a Washington County event, I want to talk about some of the things in which we collaborate with. As I told you, we are actually a state entity. Uh, Oregon Judicial Department is not tied to the county itself, we're actually a state uh, department. And so the things we do and collaborate with Washington County are very important. I think the commissioners, since we have some new faces, I think it's really important they also understand that collaboration and for you all to understand kind of how that collaboration works. So I'm going to talk about some of our specialty courts. I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm going to totally violate Ms. McLeod when she puts up her signs. I told her that already. Uh, well. I am not the chair. Uh, it's her court. All right. Uh, the first real uh, specialty court I want to talk about is our drug court. Our drug court's been around since 2005. It was one of the first ones in the state of Oregon that actually said, yeah, we appreciate there are folks who have first time, second time uh, PCS convictions, but we really want to focus on those that are supposed to go to prison. Those folks that are at that point in time, we really need to have some substantive supervision of them. We're gonna take a chance on them. And that's how our drug court was brought together, was to take a chance on these folks that were supposed to go to prison. They had committed all the crimes or the predicates of those crimes that they were supposed to go to prison. That group is made up of a judge, a single judge, so they have some continuity there. There's a deputy DA that's part of that organization, that's part of that team. There is a member from the probation department that's part of that team. And then without, through grant funds that come in through the county, there's an intergovernmental inter agreement that allows a coordinator of that group as well. That's the type of level of coordination that happens between the, the courts and your county members. That organization, that drug court, is responsible for saving approximately $11.6 million in bed spaces 
so that the state of Oregon didn't have to pay that out. For collecting $205,000, over $205,000 in actual restitution, collecting it. That's $205,000 that likely if those folks had gone to prison may never have been collected and those victims never have received. And here are some of the important things as Kevin was talking about with those jurors and the jurors' recognition of what can happen to children who are abused. 27 drug-free babies were born to participants who were in the program. We all know statistically that the, those folks and the success rates of folks that are born with uh, drugs in their system is not high. 204 children were reunited with the parent. That tells you how important that particular program is. I'm gonna skip over one of the other programs to, so Ms. McLeod doesn't have to bug me too much and talk about one that we just started. Uh, it's a little closer uh, to my heart. We started it last year and it's a veterans court. Uh, for many years, we didn't do it. Uh, I'm a veteran. Most of the people that I'll talk about that are on this team concept, again, are also uh, veterans. So brand new, it started in 2018, um, and we have already seen uh, more need than we thought we were going to have. We've also, in addition to helping out some of those vets through their, uh, as defendants, uh, through their criminal process, we've also realized that many of them did not realize that they were eligible for certain benefits. And we've now hooked them up with the VA to make sure that they knew, now know what benefits they're eligible for and that they're taking advantage of those. Part of that team includes, again, a judge, a deputy DA, actually two deputy DAs that are part of that group, a member of, from the probation department. We have somebody from the County Veterans Service Affairs and also a, a, a federal uh, Veterans uh, Justice Outreach Officer. And then our group has something different as well. We have a deputy sheriff uh, that uh, Sheriff Garrett has graciously allowed uh, for us to use. And here's the importance of that particular individual. And I'm gonna give you a story about one of those deputies named Chad Gravely, who's part of our group. He's doing his homeless outreach, which again, uh, that Sheriff Garrett has been great in reaching out to folks that are homeless out there. And he's out there doing his homeless, uh, doing his outreach to folks and to chat with folks. And he goes back to the same places these folks are at, even if they get moved. In fact, this gentleman I'm gonna be talking about got moved and he still found him. So he had, he had made contact with this individual and had been homeless for a long time. Uh, he's what we would call in chronic homeless is what we, we basically call him. It's been unfortunate for him. He has tried to get in contact with the VA and to get services and for 20 years they've told him he's not eligible. Deputy Gravely didn't give up. Uh, he brought this person to our group because he had committed a new crime. Um, I, I think it was a criminal trespass crime if I remember right. And as a result of that new crime, he may have been eligible for a program. Our program, though, only allows folks that are eligible if you actually can receive benefits from the VA. He couldn't at that point in time. We found out that 20 years ago, he had a warrant out for his arrest in Washington that had been cleared 19 years ago. But our federal government, as good as they can be, 19 years later, still had a warrant uh, on his record. And so every time he went to the Salvation Army, tried to get in and services from them, they told him he couldn't do it because he had a warrant. It almost took an act of Congress. Literally, we were getting ready to do that next step to call uh, Senator Wyden. Um, but fortunately, that, ha that warrant has now been removed from that individual's record. He is now eligible for benefits, and he's now eligible for the VA's court. And more importantly, he's eligible for the Salvation Army which is a homeless outreach program that works with veterans. And it'll be one of the first times in years that it'll actually have a real roof over his head. Some other specialty courts that we're involved in have a collaborative effort is we have a mental health court, as uh, others have talked about. Uh, we have a justice reinvestment uh, court, sometimes called IRIS, sometimes there's FSAP, and if you need to know what these acronyms mean, I'm not the person, I always forget what they are, but they, it's justice reinvestment is essentially what it is. Again, it's folks that are supposed to go to prison that we're working intensely, giving them intense supervision to try to see if we can keep them in our communities being uh, productive and not send them to prison. We also have a DUI court, which a DA's office is gracious, allows reckless drives 
to be part of that program and to be diverted as well. They don't have to, but they choose to do that, and I think it's because they do that it's the right, for the, the right thing to do. Other things we obviously do as your courts is we do domestic relations, we do dependency cases, we do delinquency cases, uh, and we have a growing caseload of civil cases, including uh, probate, trusts, and estates as a result of our citizens tending to get a little bit older. And Commissioner Rogers, that wasn't a, a shot at you at all. I promise you it wasn't, all right. <laughs> In a nutshell, that's what we do, and that's uh, what our, our courts do, and why we love this community, and why we care about this community, and why we want to keep our backyard uh, clean. So thank you again, all the commissioners and chair, for, and you all, for the opportunity to be up here and to talk to you about what our courts do and the collaborative effort that we do with your folks here in Washington County. And I'm now going to turn it to Judge Cross. Well, good evening. My name is Dan Cross, and I have the privilege of serving as the judge of the Washington County Justice Court for the last two years. I am not, however, a native Oregonian. I was born and raised in North Dakota. Thank you. A town with a total population of 200 people. I came out to Portland in 1983 to attend Reed College. I thought I was in the biggest city in the world. I soon knew that this is where I would spend the rest of my life. After graduating from Reed, I received my law degree from Lewis and Clark in 1993. Spent the next 24 years as a criminal and juvenile defense attorney. Along the way, I was in Portland, and then in uh, 1999, the December of 1999, until January of 2017 when I took the bench, I was in Hillsborough. Along the way, I served on the board of directors of the Oregon Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, also served as president of that organization, uh, sat on the chief justice of the Oregon Supreme Court's Criminal Justice Advisory Committee, frequently lectured on juvenile and criminal law topics at various seminars, and authored the chapter of the Oregon State Bar's Juvenile Law on Delinquency Dispositions. Probably the best part about my legal career was meeting my wife in law school. 1989. Michelle Rini, incredible woman who I was fortunate enough to marry in 1992. She just celebrated her 13th anniversary on the Washington County bench in the circuit court in juvenile court. She's a lifelong resident of Washington County, born and raised in Beaverton. I became a Washington County resident 27 years ago after I had the good fortune of marrying her. Our 21-year-old daughter, Sienna, also born and raised in Washington County. What I'm saying is this, you are stuck with me. <laughs> I am passionate about serving this great county because I love this incredible place and greatly appreciate the gifts which it has bestowed upon me and my family. The Washington County Justice Court is where I have the fortune to serve. That court provides a unique and important interaction with every segment of our community. The court is made up of myself, seven staff members, and in a typical year, 25 to 30,000 cases are filed in that court. The vast majority of these are traffic violations, but we also handle small claims, evictions, and animal control citations. As I mentioned, the entire cross-section of our populace comes through our doors. For most of these individuals, their appearance in our court will be the only direct experience that they will ever have with the justice system. And as such, I am keenly aware of my duty to make that experience as fair and as agreeable as possible. And I am passionate that I, along with my staff, will do our utmost to make that the reality. Thus, when you come to our court, you will receive, free of charge, a bit of a civics lesson on the function of the courts, as well as a description of your options and a complete and detailed explanation of your rights. Additionally, you will be given a full opportunity to have your say about your case. I believe that this is a critical piece of the puzzle for having people walk away with a positive view of our justice system. 
much of the time, one side or the other leaves the courtroom with a bad taste because their side of the case did not prevail. That's the nature of the beast. I have found, however, that engaging the participants in the manner I outlined earlier can greatly diminish and oftentimes completely eliminate that understandable phenomenon. Also, ensuring that each side is given the ability to fully make their case, to have their voice heard by the court, makes the decision easier for them to accept, even when that ruling goes against them. Several times a week, I have the pleasure of individuals, most of whom have been found guilty of violations, thanking the court for explaining things to them in a way that made sense and for listening to what they had to say and taking that into account in rendering a sentence. Much of what this court seeks to promote is a greater public safety through compliance with traffic laws and the improvement of driving behavior. I frequently tell people who are in front of me on traffic matters that most of the time when we drive in a less than ideal manner, nothing goes wrong. But when it does, we can't fix it. And then, in an instant, your life, or someone else's life, or both, can be changed forever. This court's effort to revert those situations has focused on expanding the court's diversion programs to provide greater opportunity for driver improvement, to really bring home to folks the responsibility they have when they get behind the wheel of a car, and to be aware of the risk that they put themselves and others at when they make poor decisions. Unlike most courts which have these kind of diversion programs, we do not dismiss the case when the class is done. In our court, you must demonstrate that you have applied what you have learned by going one year from the date you enter diversion without receiving another violation or criminal driving allegation in order for your case to be dismissed. I recently described in a comprehensive manner our diversion program to a paramedic who is also a member of the Oregon Transportation Safety Commission. And I was more than a little choked up when he replied that our program was saving lives in our community. I can think of no greater compliment that we could receive for what we do. Thank you very much for your attention. And now it is time to close out this evening's presentation. To do so, I will turn this back over to Chair Harrington for some final thoughts. Chair Harrington. Thank you, Judge Cross. It's been a pleasure to meet you this evening and to learn more about what you do along with Judge Bailey, District Attorney Barton, Sheriff Garrett, and Auditor Hutzler. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. You, along with your board, These two are the presiding judges. They do have other judges that work in their courts, but they're the presiding judges. And the collection of the 10 of us are the main folks who help govern Washington County to help ensure that this is a wonderful place for you and I each to live, work, play, and raise our families.